Breathe with me. I've been thinking about breathing. It's probably the single most important collective function of all the various parts and systems that make you up do together. Replace the oxygen, get rid of the carbon dioxide, you, we, I, at any point, minutes away from certain death. Pretty big fan of this air stuff myself. And I've been thinking about consciousness as it relates to breathing. The crowning achievement of humankind consciousness, the power player of the body, the most important component of the whole system, what makes us humans human, what makes me, me, specifically, that I am really, really, really smart. <laughs> Which is already a funny picture. I'm using consciousness to think about consciousness in what I imagine it must have felt like to be one of the beautiful people in adolescence, just staring at yourself, blown away with how pretty you are. And my consciousness is doing that, staring at itself, so proud, pondering the big stuff. And then I take a nice big breath of air, a conscious breath of air, and it hits me this whole time. I've been using my conscious mind to marvel and navel gaze at myself. The other systems, meanwhile, the unconscious parts of the brain, the nervous system, the respiratory system, the hormonal system, digestive system, have all quietly and humbly, you know, keeping me alive. While I was thinking these oh so important thoughts, I didn't even have to think about breathing. I was just breathing in the background. You know when something shifts, creates a crack just big enough for you to see something different? Well, I got it, and I saw it. My glorious, all-powerful, magnificent mind was not even trusted with keeping myself alive. Now in school, it was just casually explained that the mind had better things to do than to worry about breathing. Yeah, right, consciousness, right? Think of all the important things that you thought in the past hour that kept you alive like breathing did. That's like a hedge fund manager looking down on a water treatment worker. Yeah, excuse me, I'm too busy playing with fake numbers all day while you do lowly dirty things like prevent the world from becoming a literal fucking shitstorm and the water from killing me. So if you have a glass of water nearby, take a nice sip, take a nice Thank you moment for the water treatment worker who made the water not kill you and your house become a literal shitstorm. And it reminds me of one specific psychedelic hallucination uh, years ago where I got into an argument with a tree. It's a pretty long ordeal, but I can sum it up. The general gist of this conversation being, listen here, ape man, I've been here 90 years. I've seen a ton of you little monkey things running around, and I'm not impressed. I think we figured it out 370 million years ago when we just decided to skip the whole consciousness thing. Tell me you hate me. Chop me down. Make me a chair. I won't frown. I see you little busy, busy, worry, worry, kill and fuck and fight and feed. Well, I just hang out and have everything I need. And the tree didn't rhyme, but I like saying it that way for whatever reason, and it sums up like a three-hour conversation in a fun little rhyme. All this to say, no, your consciousness is not trusted with breathing. And none of this is meant to diminish any of the work you do with your conscious mind, but to remind you of the whole picture, all of it, and to hold as much as you can while deciding how you're going to move through the world and use your consciousness today. But one of the very, very cool things you can do with consciousness is extra credit breathing, recreational breathing. So take a nice, deep, big, greedy breath of air, maybe another nice sip of clean water that won't kill you while I tell you a story. The first middle school I went to was called White Hill Middle School. We called it White Hell Middle School. It was a pretty confusing time in all of our lives. Maybe you felt that way too. It was particularly confusing if you were a shy and nervous kid like I was. It was a new land with new rules. 
There's three schools that fed into it and lots of people I didn't know. This is not what shy and nervous people enjoy most in life, is meeting lots of new people. I had questions. Am I safe? Do I belong? What do I do? What do I do with my hands? Will my friends still like me now that they have choices? Sound familiar? It's funny how the big questions about being human don't really change. I think if you do something right, if you're living right, the answers kind of do. One of the schools that fed into White Hill was Lagunitas Elementary. These kids weren't townies like us. They were over the hill, in the valley, in the outlands. They were wild and feral, little proto-hippies. The valley is still kind of like that, but back in the day, the valley kids really stuck out. They ate organic only in the early 2000s, and they didn't have good sweets or snacks in their house. Terrible, terrible Trader Joe's crackers and things. Many didn't even have TV. These were free range, non-GMO incarnations of the human species. No homogenizing pop culture to smooth over the edges and make us all have a little bit more in common. These guys really danced to the beat of their own drum. And one of them was Oscar. Tall and lanky with big, thick eyebrows and an untamed thicket of hair that spiraled and expanded from the top of his head and just went outward like a galaxy. As a people observer, getting sat next to Oscar was like a dream come true. It was like watching a master in their workshop, except Oscar's mastery was being Oscar. Oscar was nobody other than Oscar. He Oscared phenomenally. And one day, Oscar turns to me hands me a smelly pen and says, hey, you, smell this. So I take this smelly pen and like a British explorer being invited into some local indigenous ritual, I very carefully and delicately partake in the ritual. Mm, yes, here, hand the pen back. And Oscar's just staring at me. And he starts shaking his head disapprovingly. I've done it wrong, I've offended the locals, and he snatches the pen back and he says, nah, man, you gotta get in there and smell it. And he holds that pen up to his nose and he plugs one nostril and he just <laughs> And the whole moment is transcending the sum of its parts. This is not a boy sniffing a pen in a classroom anymore. This is the raw spirit of confidence and expression and permission to live and permission to dance with itself. This is a spiritual experience in a portable classroom. He inhaled so loudly and so proudly and so powerfully, the whole classroom has turned. They're staring at him, staring at us, which is one of my greatest fears. All semblance of focus and order in this room obliterated the rhythm of this classroom, hijacked by his vibration. The whole room is staring at us and he's staring at me. And for a shy and nervous and self-conscious kid, I should be petrified and yet the entire room of people staring at us is disappearing behind him. All I see is Oscar in this pen. And he sticks his hand back out with the pen. A second chance. Another invitation. An invitation to life. Really. When life gives you a second chance at redemption, you take it. And I take it. I grab this pen which might as well have been glowing at this point. The power is beaming from this totem. The classroom looking at me. Remember, the interruption has already happened. The class is already staring at us. This is our cue. This is the moment where you apologize, where you're supposed to quash your rebellion, and you're supposed to go, Whoa, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. And somehow, some way, in that moment, I choose life instead. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh. We laugh from our bellies and no one else had a clue what was going on. I don't even remember what happens next. Maybe we got in trouble, maybe we didn't. That's not the important part. I had just been given a great lesson in that moment that I didn't even understand yet. 
seed of wisdom had been planted, that seed would take many years to sprout, but it was planted. And that sprout is still starting to flower 20 years later. I had just learned a new word in the language of breath. I had learned the universal breath word for power and freedom and confidence and permission to live. There are a million ways to breathe. It is its own language. And if any artists or scientists need a project, go record the alphabet of breath. I would love to hear it. The controlled silent breath when you're in the woods trying to listen to wildlife and you need to listen with your lungs and get as quiet as you can so you can hear as much as you can. The power of finding that last bit in your gas tank when you're lifting something heavier than you've ever lifted before. The rhythm and machine of the breath of running when you know you have a lot longer to go and you just need to keep filling your tank. And the explosive bursts of making love, breathing hot air into each other's ears. <laughs> I was doing the same thing Maori warriors do when they haka dance, which if you haven't seen one, you need to. And if you haven't tried it in the privacy of your own home, you need to. For the sake of your life, you need to try it because it's not one, because it's universal. And you'll feel it. Breath is a human universal. It's our first language. It's the first thing we do on our own here. It's our first threshold, our first exchange. Air in, carbon dioxide out. That's how it works. You cannot have one and not the other. So go on and reconnect. Reconnect with your genesis. And take a nice, deep, powerful Oscar rip of air. doesn't have to be cute or contained. Take it in. Take it all in. Stretch those lungs. The plants made your air this morning. It wasn't free. It might feel free, freely given by the plants, freely taken by you, but not free. It's kind of like this podcast. <laughs> now my favorite among you, the smart and the sensitive, have just got nervous because you can see exactly where I'm going. And I love you for it but I promise you're in safe hands. Aren't you glad you've been breathing? Welcome to the dance of life. The great give and take, a series of transactions as uncomfortable and dirty as that word may make you feel. I know you didn't ask for this. I know you have enough going on without hearing this truth, but it's an unavoidable truth. And the only way that an unavoidable truth can hurt you is if you're avoiding it. There's a cost to life, a debt. There's no pause button. You're in it. You're here. No deferment. This is the human experience. You weren't given a tree experience. And the goal of this game isn't to hoard as many chips as you can or to go for broke and spend it all. Because unlike the games we play where all that matters is the final score when the game is over, when this game ends, this life game, when it's over, when you die, is precisely when you're no longer capable of keeping score at all. So get comfortable. The play you're in right now, the shots you are or are not taking, the things you're giving and the things you're receiving right now, that's the score. And you could go ahead and try to approach it from a different angle. Go ahead as an experiment. Try and take as little as you can. Eat as little food, drink as little water, take shallow little pitiful baby breaths, and lay in bed and use as few calories as you can. Become as small as you possibly can and see how long it takes before you're suicidal. For me, it's a couple weeks. Unfortunately, taking less than you need, participating less than you're supposed to, is not how you solve this debt the debt of life, that's not how you pay the collector here. Nothing is free. Life isn't free. Consciousness isn't free. Think of all the things that had to die to keep you alive so far. And I invite you to take this one in. 
to get real clear here. I'm getting so much out of this right now, and you can too. So here you are, in the give and take of life, in the transaction. Nicer word is the dance of life. And on one level, you're doing phenomenal. Right now, you are 32 trillion cells wearing underwear. The collective you has probably put on underwear today. Take the win. If you ask me, they're working brilliantly together. All the skin cells and nerve endings and neurons, all allowing you to listen to the musings of another 32 trillion cells who bought a microphone. Your cells don't seem hung up on the dance. They take what they need. They produce what they need to produce. They're in the dance. Why don't you join them and be a good dance partner? But if this idea is still terrifying to you, the transaction, the give and take of life makes you afraid, good. Me too. You're my kind of person. Welcome. I used breath because it's a perfect transaction. It's your first and last transaction you will take here as a human. And it's beautifully simple. Every breath is a promise of another few minutes. Every year, I consciously decide to renew my sobriety and to do another year. Well, multiple times a minute, you breathe and you renew another two minutes of life. This will happen with or without you, just like life will happen with or without you if you don't participate. But you can choose to join the dance. No matter how defeated you are, no matter how lost you are, how broken you are, how much you don't want to exist anymore right now, you could close your eyes and join your body in renewing another two minutes. Take a nice deep breath, maybe three. I get shivers every time. Here you go, body. Here's another two minutes of humanity. Every breath is two minutes. Every drink of water is two days. Every bite of food is two weeks. Don't quote me on that. You get the gist. So if you don't want to be here, you could reluctantly and bitterly take a nice big breath of air, drink a nice tall glass of water, and eat some nice, fresh, healthy food with some vegetables, please. And you could consciously say, okay, body, I don't want to, but here's another two weeks. And during these two weeks, you could agree to be here. You could join the dance. Join the dance, dance with life, participate, make drawings in the sand, even though it will wash away, because you will wash away one day, pet strangers, dogs, and make faces at babies in lines, dance with your friends, or if you're single, fuck it, make out with your friends. Why not? Have fun, but don't lose sight of the cost. The cost of life. There is a cost to life. A debt. There is no pause button. You're in it. You're here. No deferment. This is a human experience. You are not given a tree experience. I went for it. I took as much as I could. I had sex with as many people that would have sex with me. I went to as many pretty places as I could. I did as many drugs as I could. None of those things paid the bills long term for me. I cannot stop repeating the line I heard from Colonel West during a lecture. Please forgive me. So many of us, including me, are in the joyless pursuit of pleasure. None of those pleasures, no matter how great they were in the moment, save me when I'm at zero. The ecstasy high I can barely remember doesn't save me. The beautiful woman I brought back home doesn't save me. The incredible $300 meal doesn't save me. Mariah, texting me it's her anniversary of not cutting herself every year, saves me when I'm at zero. The fact that I answered a message from her and we got to talking and somehow that small gesture has some tiny part to play in that story saves me. Someone taking time out of their day to tell me that something I did mattered to them saves me. The strangers I've stopped for even when I was busy and helped out on the side of the road save me. Joy is not a solo activity. Joy is being a good dance partner. Really partaking in the transaction. Joy is participating in life. 
Joy is not hiding, not withholding yourself because you're afraid of what people might think of you if you were really you, and it's not giving it away free either. This is when I meet a ruthless capitalist and I see how engaged they are in the transaction and how clear they are, I wanted to bring a little bit of that to my more sensitive and lovely and spiritual creatives that are maybe a little hung up on the transaction, on the give and take. Maybe you give too much. Quietly expect it to just come back magically without you being a part of that. Maybe you give too little because you're scared of what would happen if you were fully you. But today, I invite you to join the give and take. I invite you to dance with life. I invite you to think about what you could do today that you might not like in the moment, but you would be so proud of yourself for doing the big, scary things you're afraid to do. I invite you to dance.